Here we go. The example goes like this. Uh, let me read it and write it at the same time. A tank has the shape is the shape of a, of a converted or inverted circular cone. A water tank, that is. Okay, so a water tank has the shape of an inverted circular cone um, with, let's see, with height equals 10 meter and radius and a base radius or base radius um, equal 4 meter. So, this is the physical dimension of the tank. Now, the tank is filled with water to a height of 8 meters. Okay, so imagine you have um, inverted cone, height of 10 feet, 10 meters, I'm sorry, and eight of which is already full with water. So here comes the question. Uh, we basically want to know how much work you require to pump the water out from the top. Okay, so we, we, we have a, a sump or a pump f coming from the top and we want to pump it out. So here is the question, how much work is required to uh, empty the tank by pumping, pumping the water uh, to the top? In this problem, you can see that some of the uh, um, the calculation or the technique we use to calculate um, non-rotating solids, volume of non-rotating solids, uh, will be used here. Okay, so let's first try to sketch it. This is the top; it's a circle. And the rest of the tank is like this, inverted cone. Okay, so this is the axis of the cone. And let's say this is our bottom. And I'll use the bottom as reference. So my uh, x equals 0 position will be right here. x equals 0. Okay, the dimension of the tank, the height is 10 meters. So this is 10 meter, and the radius right here, I'll, I'll denote it as R, uppercase, is 4 meter. So this, these are the physical dimensions of the tank, and of the 10 meters, uh, 8 of those are filled with water. So let's say this is the top of the, of, uh, the tank. All of this is full with water. Okay, so we have water all the way, like so. Now, how we go about calculating the work required? We are dealing with several issues here. Uh, the force, once again, will be the weight of the water. But the weight of the water, since we have this uh, uh, volume that is, is regular shape, we need to calculate 
find the volume of the water in the tank multiplied by, this, by the specific weight of the water or the density of the water. Well, that's easy for water because it's either one gram per cubic centimeter, right, or one kilogram per liter, or 1,000 kilogram per cubic meters. Okay, since we are doing, we're dealing with a metric, we are dealing with meters and kilograms and newton. So we'll use the 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. All right. So once we find the weight, we have a force, which is the same as weight, and we need to calculate the work to move a piece of the water, piece, quote, unquote, all the way to the top. And here's the piece. I'm going to take a disk of water. Imagine a very thin disk, as we did so far, like so. So thin that the thickness will be delta or dx. I'm, I'm, I'm using the differential right away. Instead of taking delta x as the thickness, or delta y if you want, uh, I'm going to call, I'm going to say this is a differential. And this differential, this particular disk of water positioned at the x distance of x meters from the bottom. And I need to bring it up all the way to the top. Okay? So by how much do I need to bring it up? What will be the displacement for this particular disk of water? Well, it will be this much, right? So the displacement will be the difference between 10 and x. John, does it look familiar to you, like we did with uh, rotation? So this is the displacement. And the displacement will be 10 meter, the height of the cone, minus x, which is where we found our disk of water. Okay? So now we're going to break it down into step by step. And here we go. We'll look at, first of all, the volume of the disk. So this is an element of a volume. dv equals, by element I say infinitely small. So infinitely small element of volume equals the area of the disk times the thickness or the area of the disk is 2 pi r squared dx where r squared is the radius right here of the disk. Okay, so we have that, uh, we wrote that, this except we have a problem uh, with R because all of a sudden we have this new quantity R. So we need to express R in terms of X. Okay, so what we'll do, we use similar triangles, and we did this before, similar triangles to express R in terms of X. So I'm going to look at this cone. I'm going to take one half. In this case, I'll take the, uh, uh, I can take the right half. And what I see, if I'll flatten it, I'll see a triangle, a right triangle. Okay? And here is my disk right there. So this is R and this is X, right? The position of the disk of water from the bottom. On the outside, I have the 10 meter, which is the height of the big triangle, and I have the 4 meter, which is the radius of the big triangle. And I can see that I have similar triangles 
and using similar triangle, I say the ratio x to 10 is the same as the ratio r to 4. So from here I get r equals 4 uh, over 10x and reduce it to 2x over 5. Okay. Again, just by similar triangle. And this is something you'll do a lot tomorrow. But we've done this before when we did the, uh, the pyramid, if you remember. Okay. Also, did we do it with that uh, little funny hat that we have? We did the equilateral triangles. Trying to remember if we had similar triangles over there. I don't think so. So now the element of volume becomes dv pi r squared. So instead of r, we have 2x over 5 squared times dx. So we have 4 pi over 25 x squared dx. This is dv. Now the next step is to convert it into mass and then convert it into weight. Okay? So the element of mass is, we call it dm. So dm is element of mass. Because of the density, well, we're going to write it, it's, it's equal density times dv. Okay? Density times volume or it would be the density is 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter, and the volume, dV, is, by the way, this is in cubic meters, okay, because we measured everything in meters, so times 4 pi over 25 x squared dx in in cubic meters. And you can see that the cubic meter and cubic cancel each other and the end result will be in kilogram. And if you calculate this, you have 1,000 divided by 25. That will be 40. So 40 times 4, we're looking at 160 pi x squared dx kilogram. Okay. So it depends on how the size of the differential dx, this will be the, uh, the mass of the, this disk of water that we are trying to move up to the top. Okay? The next thing, so we have dv, that was the first thing to do. The next thing to do is dm. And now we're looking at the force or the weight. Well, weight and force, the same thing. Oh, what is the difference? Well, the force is the mass times the gravity. So I'm going to say that df, an element of the force or weight, and it will be equals to dm times g. And I'll take g as 9.8. Okay, so. Am I okay to clear page three, or are you still looking at it? Okay, let me pause here, give you time to write it down. So, um, in terms of calculation, we're looking at 160 pi x squared dx, times 9.8, and since this is kilo kilogram, and this is um, the gravity is uh, meter per second squared, we end up getting newtons as the uh, value, and you calculate it out, which I have, and this will come to uh, 1,570 pi, x squared dx newton, like so.
So we are almost home because now we have the force, df, or element of the force, and we can calculate an element of the work, or the work that is required to move this element of water. That's what I mean by element. So dw equal the element of work, but again, this is what we really mean is the uh, the work required to move this element of uh, water, infinitely small element of water. Well, that will be the force times the displacement, right? So it will be df times the displacement. And we discussed the displacement when we did, when we looked at the original sketch, right? The displacement in red is 10 minus x. So whatever we have here, it will be multiplied by 10 minus x. And finally, we are done, and the work will be the integral of dw or the integral of um, 1570 pi x squared 10 minus x dx. What are the boundaries? Well, the boundaries are straightforward because the water distributed from x equals 0 all the way to x equals 8. I didn't write it here. I should have written it here. The water level is 8 meters. Okay? So I'm going from x equals 0 to x equals 8. That will cover all the water. And the displacement is 10 minus 6. One thing you want to be careful. Do not confuse the boundaries of the integration with the displacement. Okay? The displacement is by how much are you moving this stuff? The boundaries of integration is where is the stuff that we are moving? Okay, so we go from 0 to 8. And for those of you who need to have a number at the end of the road, uh, the result of the calculation will be, if I approximate it, it will be 3.4 times 10 to the uh, 6 joule.